So, I want to show you real life situations. So let me explain quickly before we get started. I've turned up to a job for a window fitting company that I do a load of work for. They've cut a window out of a solid wall and put a window in and they've, they've booked me in. I've got one day to sort of come in, work my magic and get the job looking right. Now they haven't shut the wallpaper back too great so we've had to do a little bit of that as well which we sort of grumbled about but we got it done. So what you're going to see in this video is me turn up to a job the window's been cut out. I'm going to dry line the inside of the window frame. I'm going to fill it all out with backcoat plaster. And I'm going to skim it. And I'm going to get it done as fast as possible. So let's get straight into it now. This is how it happens in the real world. Here, the way they've cut this brickwork out, these blocks on the inside compared to the bricks on the outside, they've, they've given a, you know, they're really far back there. There's quite a big bit to build up on, um, on both sides, really. I mean, it's doable, but it just means that my me, me board's got to be right out here. There's going to be a massive gap, but we can make this happen. Um, it is nicer if they can really, you know, line this up and get these absolutely spot on. But, you know, I appreciate it's not that easy for the, the brickies or whoever's done it, you know. Right, so what I'm going to do now is measure and find out which is the deepest point. Because this should be spot on level and this should be spot on level and it should be even both sides. What are the chances of that happening? So we'll just find out, we'll just see. We've got six and a half inches there. Six and a half inches there. I'm just sighting the end of the, 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 the numbers on the tape measure. I'm looking down the wall, you know, so I'm just, because the wall's too far away, so I'm not doing that. I'm just sort of sighting it from there. Six and a half inches there. Let's go this side. Six and a half inches. Six and a half inches. It's a miracle. So that means we can cut all our boards. Six and a half inches. Now I cut the reveals first. Boom. Because this is going to be wet when we're skimming it. The adhesive is going to be wet. So there's a little tip for you. Cut your reveals first. Sit them in position. Because then you win the head. It can sit on top of the reveals and it won't start sliding down whilst it's wet. Because I'm not going to be able to tack it because we're into steel. So I can't put a nail through to sort of hold it still. So I'm going to sit it on top of the wind reveals. I put the sill in last. Because if we put the sill in first and put the reveals on it, they'll be pushing down on the sill, so we don't want that. So, reveals in first, sill in, head on, sat on top of the reveals, and then this is just the soffit is just stuck underneath, and that that'll just be held in by the suction. So that way, then we haven't got to let everything set before we start skimming it. We can, you know, we can start getting on it then. And um, the adhesive stays wet, but we'll put bonding around the edges because bonding goes off fast. So then. The bonding will set when I've sort to fix the beads to, even though the adhesive is still wet and we can start skimming. It's just a way that we have to get it rounded so we, we can do it in one day. We've just got an older piece of board. It's not brand new. It doesn't look beautiful. It's getting skimmed over and it's good and solid, so say it was a um, break into it. A nice full sheet of plasterboard for a little job like this. We always sort of keep a few offcuts on the van, but they do tend to get a bit battered in the back of the van. So that's it now, boards are all cut. Now, you can see from putting the board to the back of the window frame, that's the sort of thickness I'm going to have to fill out there and also we've discovered that this metal lintel is almost flush here so the boards won't be able to sit on the front of here they're going to have to sit inside this and the bricklayers brought this quite far flush with the wall so this little nib will almost um, be f sorry this little nib <laughs> will almost be f I'm tapping over here you can't see this little nib will be flush basically with the wall so Kevin's mixing up some adhesive now because we've got so far to build out he's going to mix it quite thick so it won't be ideal but it's going to for working with it's going to be quite thick you know to use but it's going to stay firm rather than drooping being wet <laughs> it's okay Right, I want to tell you something quickly as well about suction because I found a couple of people getting a little bit confused about this because when we talk about suction, 
we've basically got two means in plastered. So I talk about SPR completely killing the suction, but then we also talk about plaster sticking to things with suction, and it's different types of suction. So this handboard or hawk, if you're crazy and you call it a hawk, this has got a build of a plaster on it. So it's dry plaster. So when I put wet plaster on this, it's gonna be have a high suction. It's gonna draw the moisture out of the plaster. So we wet these down first, and that's to kill the suction off. Because all that plaster now that's on that board or hawk has absorbed the moisture, so it's not gonna suck out the plaster. So that's what we talk about. Suction is in terms of when it draws the moisture out. But now the other form of suction we talk about is when you get some plaster and it has suction like that. Now that's a different type of suction. That's not the same suction that we're, we're dealing with when we're SPR. That's sticking to that because this is this material is wet, so it has its own sort of it's like when you throw some um, kid's slime and it sticks to the ceiling. It's a different type of suction. We're not talking about the suction where it draws the moisture out there. So when people have said to me in the past, oh, well, if you completely kill the suction, doesn't that mean the plaster will fall off? No, it's, it, it's different. It's, it's different. One type of suction is where you've got bone dry plaster drawing moisture out of what you're using, which is bad suction. You don't want that. You can try and kill that off. And then there's the suction that that keeps wet plaster stuck to the bottom of your handboard, to, to your ceiling, to whatever you, you're plastering on, it's different. So you can use SPR and it will kill the suction, but it doesn't mean that that will fall off. We've just killed the suction on this handboard of water, but this is still stuck to it. Does that make sense? Right, we're about to set the reveals on now. This is quite important, this. If you look here, we haven't got much to fix to, but we've got to work with what we've got. This, this is the situation. So if Kieran comes a little bit, this way so you can sort of see from here what I don't want to do is what you never ever want to do is the whole point of having a cavity is to separate these two courses of brick so I don't want to put any plaster on that and cause a bridge to this because this the whole point of this is when it rains outside this can get damp and dry out and it doesn't affect here you see so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my plasterboard up to the window frame so it won't actually be touching them bricks there on the outside see, see here we've got the back of the frame there and we're not going to touch them bricks there but we do need to get a bit of a fixing i can't just fix at the front of the board because it's going to be flapping so instead of putting adhesive there i'm going to use foam we're going to spray some foam up the back of it some of this crazy foam i mean be careful with this because if it goes off and you haven't got control of it it'll be everywhere we're going to fix the back of this board with that and we're going to fix the front of it with adhesive. And that'll just catch that plasterboard then. Some adhesive up here, you sit the board in, that'll catch the back, and the adhesive will catch the front. And we mix the adhesive dead thick, almost so it's going to break the arm, so that we can get the thickness. I make here and mix it dead thick. <laughs> it's a little bit too thick, but I'm not going to admit it. I'm going to just suffer and get it done. <laughs> Now, if you come on the side here, see the board is touching the foam at the back, so we know that's going to sit 
firm and solid on that, it's, it's stuck to it now. And this is why we mix this so thick, because that gap is so wide, we don't want all the adhesive drooping and just dripping off there. So the thicker it is, the less it's going to do that. And what I'm also doing is checking your margins. I'm working, I can see through, you can't really see it on the camera, but I can see through to the back of the window frame. So I know that the margins are gonna be the same, but if you can't do that, if you can't do that, just measure them. 40 mil. 40 mil. Just make sure that your margins are the same right around your window. <clears throat> Right now, another thing is a lot of blokes like to use a set square. You can put a set square in your window frame and check that your reveals at a 90 degree angle to the window. Um, if you haven't got a set square, you can use the manufactured edge of a plaster board, just cut a triangle off the corner of a brand new board and that's 90 degrees. And you can just check them for square. I mean, or you can just sight them. I mean, I can just look at that and I just know it's the right angle. Um, but feel free to use a set square. If you've never done it, if you've never done it before, probably best use a set square and just make sure it is 90 degrees. Okay, and we're leaving the, the sill lower down because eventually they're going to come back, the window firm are going to come back and put a sill board on this. So this margin won't be the same. We're going to leave this down so they've got clearance to, to come and glue a sill board on top of it. Okay, so now we've mixed up some bonding now. Not adhesive, this is the, it's the grey bonding, car light bonding. Uh, you can get pink, it doesn't really make a difference, it just depends which factory it's come from. Now if you come over here, you can see now that the adhesive is still, this is still wet, yeah, this is as wet as we put it in. We've literally, this is like five minutes after I've just stuck all these on. Now I know that this adhesive is gonna stay wet for a long, long time. Too, too long for us, because we wanted to get the, the finishing plaster on. But I also know that the foam around the back of the boards, that's going to set in about 20 minutes, half an hour. So that'll be nice and solid. Now the front of the boards, what I want to do is, I'm going to fill out with this stuff, this bonding, because it's going to set faster. This stuff won't take long to set at all. So I'll fill right round everything now with bonding. And as soon as that starts to pick up, we can start skimming it. The adhesive behind will still be wet. That'll be wet for a couple of hours but we'll be already fit, you know, skimming by then. And as long as you don't press really hard on the boards, it'll be fine and it'll all set together. Now it's all filled out, 
as you can see with the bonding because that's going to set faster now that will still crack so if you can see there we're putting scrims on and we're overlapping them so there's no gap so them scrims are going to go right round over everything we've done Kieran gets to do this bit because he doesn't mind putting his fingers in the wet bonding but everywhere even though the boards have been filled out behind them with bonding it will still crack so make sure you put scrim over every joint of plasterboard and every joint where the bonding meets the old walls just to be sure I mean it only takes you a second so you're better off putting it in than chancing it sometimes if you'd filled all this with plasterboard adhesive rather than bonding you potentially wouldn't have to scrim it because the, the bonding really grips quite well to the boards but even still just to be on the safe side I'd still do it you're not losing anything by doing it are you Kieran's just wetting the bonding up now a little bit. Right, Kieran's just wet the bonding up a little bit more because now all this has been filled out to all been scrimmed, but it's still wet. But we need to get the beads on. We can't get a solid fixing in whilst this is wet. So now we've just used a little bit more wet bonding and we're going to dab the beads on. Right, so what you can see now is. We've used the bonding for filling all around the edge of the board because the bonding will set quite quick whereas the adhesive will take too long to set. It'll take ages. So we're going to use the bonding to make a nice solid fix at the front. But the bonding doesn't grab as well as the adhesive so we, won't, we want to have the adhesive in the background. But anyway, what we're doing now is we're wetting the bonding up. Now, that's going to do two things. One, it's going to make it easier to dab beads onto the corners with. But two, once we wet that bonding up, that's going to also set faster because when you mess around with plaster and you wet it up, it sets quicker. So we're wetting it up to make the beads go on easier, but it does a double action thing. It's also going to help it set quicker as well. As all you want to make sure is that your beads are pushed back nice to your boards. Your boards are all level, you check them with the level. So when you put your beads on now, make sure that the corners all meet up perfectly and the beads are pushed back. And then, when you clean down, notice where my trowel is. Look, I'm not here, I'm not on the face of the bead, I'm just behind the nib of the bead there. Because if you fill out to the front of the bead, there's nowhere for you to finish, you finish to go. So you want to make sure, if you have sort of done that, yeah, if you bead this fill all like that, just come down and just wipe it out there. Yeah, you, sh you should use a brush for that really, not your thumb. But make sure that you're back behind the nib of the bead. The last thing you want to do is put your skim on and that's the whole point of the bead to give you a nice hard corner to work to. So if you're not doing that and leaving it there, you put your trial just inside the bead and doing that. And that way, it'll be nice and straightforward when you're skimming. Now we know now, all these beads are on, that bonding isn't going to take too long to set. It's not like the adhesive, that'll pick up fast. As soon as that starts to feel nice and firm under the touch, we'll get the finish straight on. Right, roll plugs, pain in the back side, make sure there's no screw in them. See them here now. You can pull it, can you see that or not? Yeah. Can you zoom in, can you see it? Yeah, yeah you can okay, see it. Okay, yeah, I'm just you're quite far away, so. I've got some closure. Raw plugs, no screw in them. Yeah, you can either try and pluck them out or send them in, or just get your trowel and <laughs> gone. One over here. See you there. Gone. That's the easiest way of dealing with them. Um, now, if you zoom in here a little bit, I can see that the bonding started to change colour here. See these little dark spots coming? So I know now it's starting to go off. We can start putting the finish on. Now, Kieran's going to mix up. And we want this to go off quite quick because it's only a little area. So we're going to put some accelerator in. So we're not here forever. Troweling up just a little, a little job like this. Accelerator goes in first. <clears throat> and it has to be mixed up before you set the powder in. So 
If you put your accelerator in, make sure you give it a little spin round. Don't just put your powder straight in. Because as soon as it comes into contact with that accelerator, it will start setting. So you don't want a big clump of accelerator at the bottom of the bucket and your powder goes in because the bit that touches that first is going to get, you know, it's going to start going off instantly. Did I mention SBR? You know I love SBR, but your PVA or whatever you're going to use will go on first. So when this wallpaper got stripped back as far as we needed to, we then put the seal straight on. I don't think I mentioned that earlier, but the seal on first. We don't need to reseal over the bonding again because it's nice and damp. It won't need sealing. If we left it till tomorrow, you'd have to seal that again, but it doesn't need it now because it's just sort of set in now. And when you put your finish on, you want to be blending in straight away. So I'm not leaving big ridges like this because they'll start picking up and it'll cause a nightmare. Make sure you blend it in right from the start. So that's it now, just skim as usual, um, go across your beads, don't curl out to them, so that they're, they're rounded out. Another thing I want to mention to you is, I'm coming up this way and I'm making sure this is blended in, but I'm also, I'm coming this way because I'm going across the beads. If I just went like that, you'd end up curled out to the bead. So I come that way, I can see that's all hollow. So I make sure it's filled out. Last thing you want is all your beads curled out. So make sure you fill your beads out nicely. So you see now, I'm going to start filling out to all the beads. So I'm going to I'm going to bring the head in. I'm only coming out to the front at this moment in time, but I'm not going to just leave it like that. I am going to go both ways. So you'll see, I'll get to the end, and then I'll come across it to make sure that the bead is filled out and there's no hollows. Now I know to put it on thicker and take it off when I'm coming along. So I'm putting this reveal on now thicker than what it needs to be. And when I come up it, like now, now, I'm taking stuff off and it's filled up. There's no hollows. I mean, it just takes a bit of practice. You can you can sort of put them on and have hollows and have to fill them out. Or you can just get used to putting them on a bit thicker and taking stuff off when you go up and down them. But the main key is to go both ways on all surfaces, not only when you skim a wall or a ceiling, but all your heads, all your reveals, everything. You always go two ways, see, going across, making sure that it's not curled like the letter C, because it's very easy to put things in the wrong shape. Now, before you put your second coat on, make sure all your beads are all cleaned back like that. Don't leave anything sort of sticking over the edge of the bead. If at this point you've gone wild and got it all over the frames, wipe the frames down. And if you've got any big lines, maybe flatten it all and give it all a nice little flatten over make sure there's no big ridges where it's going to blend in you've got all that sort of laid down nice and smooth right down you can leave that now let that pick up a little bit now this has got accelerator in it and <coughs> and we're going to let that pick up a little bit whilst that's setting and then we're going to wet this up again with a little splash of water that's going to set rapid so i will be moving Ain't no one's business. You've never seen a fat fella move so quick. But I'll get that second coat of this stuff and it'll be off in no time. There won't be any time for messing around. It'll be flattening. Trial, trial, polished, done. We'll be cleaned up and gone. Right. That is getting firmed up now. You can touch it. It's not sticking to my fingers. Still make impressions in it. So it's ready for the second coat. This stuff in here has gone off a little bit. It's getting a bit thicker. Kevin's going to add a little bit of water and then we're going to get a move on and get it second coated. Now for the second coat, exactly the same again. As you're laying it on, make sure that you're blending that, that leading edge in. Now, I know exactly what I can do. So we've only stripped the wallpaper back to here. I will blend it in that part. 
if this is the first time you've done it, we've only literally just stripped off the wallpaper that we need off to get this done, um, just because we're on a tight schedule. If it's your first time at doing it, just strip all the wallpaper off because you might end up blending out a lot further than what you think. So um, just be aware of that. Just check as well when you're skimming your reveals and your head and your sill that when you do it, just check that the same straight go two ways on them, you know. Bring them down this way first. And then go up and down to make sure they're not curled out. There's no hollow in the middle of them. And then also sight them. Make sure that they're not make sure they're not curving out at the top and the bottom and not, you know, kicked in that way, just, just check them. Okay. Now, I'm gonna flatten this in. The kiln's going to wash out. Now, you never need to use water when flattening in, but if you're blending in, it's fine. The bit where you're blending in is going into nothing, so it will dry out quite fast. So you need to put a lot of water up and down this blend throughout this whole process. Every time you get to this blend, you're going to need to wet it down just to help it go in. Now, some fellas will say, Flexi trials are great for this. They're not. Flexi trials will ruin a job like this. They just don't even bother with them. In fact, what you probably need to do is, if you if you haven't already seen it, <clears throat> I'm getting quite good at this now. I'm going to make a little link appear here. Click on this video to watch about flexi trials and why you shouldn't use them. It's just there now. Hey, okay. smart, aren't I? <laughs> Making that happen. Well, and sometimes when you're blending in, a little bit of wallpaper paint will drag into the plaster like that and leave little tear marks in it. Now, what I'll do is, in just a second, I'll show you how to deal with that. Okay, so you'll see now, I start wetting everything down with a flat brush, and I'm cleaning the beads off of it as well. Now, that little bit where the wallpaper paste was dragging before, I'm going to start wetting that and brushing it in now. See, I'm wetting it, brushing it in, I'm troweling it across, it's still dragging a little bit. So I'll just brush it some more, and you just keep working it. What you do is you work the fat up on the plaster and keep going across it, and eventually it'll just stop dragging in. Work away from the plaster. Don't keep dragging into the plaster, but work away from it a little bit, and it won't pull like chunks of the stuff into your work. It's hard to explain, but if you've experienced it, you'll know what I mean. So what you can hear in the background there is the customers coming for a little chin wag, and I must admit I do enjoy it. I'd rather the customers come in and talk to me than stay out of the way because, you know, the job gets a little bit tedious if you're on your own all day. Just by listening to music, how can you? Can you just buy a basic guitar and start off? Really? Yeah, yeah, you don't need anything expensive. If you pay seventy quid, you get a perfectly good. Yeah, sound over there. Yeah. So there you go. I thought I'd just let you get a little. Uh, 
bit of a gist of the conversation, what we were yapping about. That was Kieran talking to him. So I think um, I think Kieran's got plans of joining Boys Own or something next. So this is it now. This is the second wet trowel. And as you can see, every single time I've hit this wall, I've brushed the angles in and, and the join. I've brushed, that's the bit I'm trying to tell you, the join, where, where it blends into the wall, you've got to keep wetting that every single time because it'll tear so easy. You've got to wet it and wet it and trowel it up and down. Never go across it, only go up and down it. It's the only way to make sure it blends in lovely. If you try and do it with a flexi trowel, it'll just follow the shape of wherever the plaster is and you want it to be flat. So you've got to use a solid stainless steel trowel or steel trowel. Flexible or plastic is not the way to go when blending in. It looks beautiful, but trust me, it's not blended in properly. When the sun hits across that wall, it'll look an absolute mess. So at this point now, on your second wet trowel, you've only got a polish next. Just make sure that everywhere's blended in nice, so there's no ridges anywhere, because this is your last chance. You've got a little bit of this stuff to sort of fill it. And after this, that you're not gonna be able to blend anymore in. So just go around and make sure that there's no sort of misses or hollows or ridges anywhere at this point. There shouldn't be, if every single time you've been over it, you've been wetting it and blending it in, but just make sure. At this point, as well, once you finish your sort of your second wet trowel, you can go around and make sure your frames are spotless. Get any little bits of plaster off them if there's any in them. So here you are. If you've watched any of me other videos, you'll know I'm not fond of corner trowels. I like to use the corner of my actual trowel to make the corners nice and square and just tickle them in with the, the water brush there. Never use your trowel to clean these if you can help it. I mean, you can get away with it, but chances are um, if, you, if you're a lunatic, you might scratch the frame. So you're better off with a plastic scraper if you can get your hands on one and use plastic to clean the plastic. If you if you do this with a metal scraper and you've got a little nick in the metal scraper, you put zigzags all over the, the brand new frame, so you're better off with plastic for cleaning your window frames down. And leave these on. Don't pull these tapes off. Once these are done, you can cut down there nice and neat with a sanding knife, peel them off, and put your, you know, your, your cork or whatever you put that, I don't know what they put around the window fitters, they put some silicone around it or something. But leave them on. Um, someone had already took the other ones off on this, so that's why they're not on. But just takes away that risk of having little nicks and stuff in the frame off your trail. <laughs> Job done. <laughs> Finished. Not bad. Four hours tops. Three and a half hours actually. Oh. Abdul, come closer. Don't start. So all this Abdul come closer and Abdul go back. I don't understand it, right? But Kieran's on TikTok and apparently there's a trend on TikTok and there's someone famous. I don't know. I don't. If you're on TikTok, maybe you'll understand it. All I know is. It's all he ever flipping says and it drives me nuts. So he just gets told, Shh, shut up. <laughs> so that's it. That's how we use bonding and accelerator in the finishing plaster to get a job done in less than three and a half hours. Now, if you follow the directions on how to blend in, it should look seamless like this. There's no ridge and no bump. Right, so 
Hope you enjoyed that video. I've been trying to show you how fast you can get things done. Now, it's possible to get that done even quicker than that. We could put an accelerator in the bonding. We could have put more accelerator in the finishing plaster. But I wanted to work at a nice, comfortable sort of pace to get the job done comfortably. But it is possible to go faster. Now, if you're a beginner, I'd recommend forget the accelerators. Maybe even use retarders to slow things down a little bit. Um, but I'm just trying to get across to you. In other videos, I've told you, once we've sort of covered the basics, I wanted to sort of lay the groundwork on my channel, and then we'll start getting to more and more advanced stuff. So now we're just starting to touch on, you know, little things that you can do to improve and get faster and faster. And we'll continue to do this now with the channel, because we've got a sort of a, a framework that we can build on. So the videos will get more and more advanced as we go along. But guys, anyway, as always, if you enjoyed that, you found it informative, and you want to show your appreciation and buy me an ice cold beer, there's a link in the description. You don't have to. There's no obligation. It's just if you wanted to say thank you, you can do. The option's there for you. Guys, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. If you think someone else might find it informative, feel free to share it. Or you can subscribe if you want. I did say I'd stop saying that, so I don't know how I'm starting again. But I don't know how else to end my videos. So anyway, I'm going. Ciao. See you later. Ta -da. Adios, amigos. Right, real quick. Just before I do go for good, I just want to make sure you got the main points from that video. First thing, as soon as we strip the wallpaper back enough, we put our sealer on straight away so it had time to dry. Then, when we used the adhesive, we didn't rely on the adhesive setting before we could start skimming. So, on top of the adhesive, we left that back a little bit and we filled it with bonding because bonding sets faster than drywall adhesive. So, we used the bonding to go off so we could skim straight on it and in the skim, we put accelerator to get that to set faster. We could have put accelerator in the bonding. We didn't need to. It goes off within about 60 minutes anyway. That's how we did it. They're the main points. So if you take nothing from that video, just remember those parts. That's how you can get patched up around a window real quick.